Okay. Here is another um another function that we can look at. Y it's a rational function, so y is equal to x plus one squared over one plus x squared. Okay. If I square the top, it would look like x squared plus two x plus one. And so this would uh, this function can also look like x squared plus 2x plus 1 divided by, I just rearranged 1 plus x squared, so x squared plus 1. If we use long division, x squared plus 2x plus 1 divided by x squared plus 1, that's just um, dividing x squared by x squared, and that's 1. 1 times x squared plus 1. Okay, we have x squared plus 1. Then taking the difference of this minus x squared plus 1, we have 2x. So 2x is the remainder. So another way of writing y is equal to... Uh, another way of writing this function is y is equal to 1 plus... So that's y is equal to 1 plus 2x over x squared plus 1. What is the first derivative? Of course, the first derivative of 1 is 0. Then the first derivative of this ratio, the derivative of the top is 2 multiplied by the bottom minus the deri derivative of the bottom, which is 2x, times the, times the top, 2x. And if we distribute 2 here, and then this becomes minus 4x squared, we see that the numerator becomes simplified into 2 minus 2x squared over the square of the denominator. Now you set that equal to 0, and you will get the critical values on the top. And the denominator will, not, will never be 0 because x squared plus 1 is always positive. Okay. Now, suppose we didn't do all these long division Right? Suppose we didn't do all this long division. You can go ahead and find the first derivative right from the beginning right here using the quotient rule. So we square at the bottom and then take the derivative of the top, which is 2 times x plus 1. Then the derivative of x plus 1 is 1 multiplied by the bottom minus okay, whatever is on the top multiplied by the derivative of the num denominator, which is the derivative of the denominator is 2x. Okay, and then do all the manipulation or algebra here. We see that x plus 1 is a common factor on the numerator. You see that? x plus 1 is a common factor, so pull it out. 2 is also a common factor, so pull that out. What is left would be from here we pull out x plus 1, so it's what is left is 1 plus x squared minus one of the factors of x plus 1 is also left, and x. And simplify all of this, we will get 1 minus x. Set each factor to 0, or rather set the denominator, the numerator, set the numerator to 0, and we see that x plus 1 is 0, or 1 minus x is 0, so the two critical values are 1 and negative 1, which you will get the same answer when you set this numerator here to 0. This is, when we factor this out, it's going to look like this. See, you'll get the same answer for critical values. All right. First derivative test, we could use the first derivative test to find uh, um, whether it's increasing or decreasing at the at negative 1 to the left of negative 1 and to the right of negative 1 and so on and so forth. Suppose we test negative 2 so y prime at negative 2 this would be negative times positive over okay, negative times positive over positive will give us negative. Okay. 
What about between negative 1 and 1? Let's use 0. So if x is 0 here, then we have positive times positive over positive and over positive. This means in this interval we have positive. So there is a decreasing and an increasing occurring at um, x equal to negative 1 to the left of negative 1 and to the right of negative 1, which means there is a local minimum occurring at x equal to negative 1. What about to the right of 1? Let's test 2. So y prime at 2 would be, this would be positive times negative. So positive times negative over positive would give us negative. So you see that there is a change of sign. So that means again, to the left of 1, it's increasing. And to the right of 1, it's decreasing. So we have a local, we have a local max occurring at x equal to 1. We have a local min occurring at x equal to negative 1. All right. So far, what we have found is that we took the first derivative of this function, and then um, we found local extreme values, local max and local min. What about points of inflection? Which means we have to take the second derivative of y. Okay, so, so far, that's what we've got. We plug in negative 1 here, and we if this is negative 1, then y is 0. If x is equal to 1, then y is equal to 2. Because that's just 4 over 2, which means y is equal to 2. So we find points of inflection by taking the second derivative. So, so far, this is our first derivative. Taking the second derivative would be differentiating y prime again. Okay. Here's how it looks like. Square the denominator, okay, and then on the top take the derivative of two minus two x squared, okay, so that's minus four x, and then multiply by the denominator, minus take the derivative of the bottom which means you bring down 2 times 1 plus x squared. Using chain rule, multiply the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of 1 plus x squared is equal to 2x, multiplied by the numerator. And when we do that, we pull out negative 4x, because there's 2 and 2 there, so that's negative 4. And then x is a common factor right there. So we pull out minus 4x. Also, 1 plus x squared, the quantity 1 plus x squared is a common factor. So pull that out as well. So what is left now would be one of the factors of 1 plus x squared plus, because we pulled out a negative, okay. So now it's plus, what's left is just 2 minus 2x squared. Okay, simplify the numerator, and this is what we get. Right now, this is the second derivative. We set it equal to 0. Okay, now the denominator will not be 0, but the top, we can set that equal to 0. We see that four minus 4x four is 0, or 3 minus x squared is equal to 0. So if we uh, set this equal, 3 minus x squared to 0, that means x squared is equal to 3 take the square root of both sides, we get that x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. And of course here, x is just equal to 0. So the two critical values for points of inflection would be 0 or plus or minus the square root of 3. Okay, let us now check for concavity by looking at the change of sign of the second derivative. Okay, so we've got here we test 0, uh, we mark our number line, that's the square root of negative square root of 3, 0, and square root of 3. Okay, 
Negative square root of 3 is approximately 1.7. So we can test negative 2. We can test um, negative 1. And then from 0 to 3, we can use 1. And then 2 here. Now we check y double prime. Okay, at negative 2. So this becomes negative. Negative 4 times negative 2 is positive. So that is, we have positive okay, times 3 minus uh, negative 2 squared. That's 3 minus 4. That would be negative divided by positive. That's negative. Okay? Now from negative 3 to 0, we test uh, negative 1. So y double prime at negative 1 would be, okay, the first would be positive. And then 3 minus negative 1 squared would be positive. Divided by positive will make it positive. Okay, so we see that there is a change of sign of the second derivative from negative to positive, so negative three, square root of 3 is a point of inflection. Let's see if 0 is also a point of inflection. Okay, so y double prime at 1 would be, would be negative times positive over positive would make it negative. Okay, so we have negative, positive, negative. Again, from positive to negative means that zero is a point of inflection. What about to the right of square root of three? If we try two, what is the second derivative when we plug in equal? What is the sign of the second derivative when we plug in x equal to two? We have four times negative uh, rather, 4 times 2 would be negative 8, so that's negative times 3 minus 4 is negative over positive would make it positive. So we have those change of sign, negative, positive, negative, positive, all right? which means all of these critical values are points of inflection. Whenever you have a change of concavity from concave down to concave up, concave down to concave up. So we have those points of inflection occurring at x equal to negative square root of 3 at 0 and at 3. Okay. Let's look at the different points of inflection, and it's at uh, when x is equal to negative square root of um, 3, when x is 0, and when x is equal to square root of 3. And again, here it's concave down to the left of square root of 3, then it's concave up from square root of 3 to 0. And then from 0 to square root of 3, it's concave down. And then to the right of square root of 3, it's concave up. And also, we found that um, our critical points for local max and min occurs at when x equal to negative 1, y is equal to 0. When x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2. See that there's a local min maximum occurring there because it's concave down. There's a local minimum occurring here because it's concave up at x equal to negative 1. And we know that y, uh, y equal to this rational function would have a horizontal asymptote because the limit as x approaches um, plus infinity or negative infinity is 1. So you see that the highest power here is x squared and the highest power at the bottom is also x squared. So that's why the horizontal asymptote is 1. 
Remember when we take, when we want to find a horizontal asymptote, we look at the top and the bottom. If they're equal, it's just the ratio of their coefficients. And both coefficients are 1. So the horizontal asymptote is y equal to 1. How do we graph y is equal to x squared plus 4 over 2x? Again, let's look at the domain of this function. Find the second derivative. The first, find the first and the second derivative. Look for critical values for possible, local, min or max, and then also for points of inflection. Use the second derivative test for concavity at the same time for local, min, and max. And if the first, second derivative test fails, then we just use the, we use the first derivative to find local, uh, max, and plot the critical points and then look for x and y intercept and additional points. All right. Let's look at this function. And if I, again, divide the top by 2x, we will see that it's just equal to x over 2 plus 2 over x. This is easier to differentiate. This is just, f, it's just a line. And this is just 2 times x to the negative 1. Take the first derivative, okay, we set it equal to 0 to find the critical values. Now, this, the first derivative of x over 2 is just 1 half. The first derivative of 2 over x is just negative 2 over x squared. Where did the negative come from? Because this is x raised to the negative 1. So that brings down the negative 1, and then x to the negative 2 x to the negative 2 brings x squared at the bottom. Now, if you set this equal to 0, that means 1 half minus 2 over something is 0. What would be that something? Well, if 1 half minus 2 over 4, which means it's also 1 half, would make it 0, x, x will be, this whole thing would be 0 if x squared is equal to 4, or when x is equal to plus or minus 2. Okay. Now get the second derivative. Y double prime would be 4 over x cubed. Set that equal to 0. And we see that it does not exist at x equal to 0. But we can still test for um, local, uh, rather test for concavity to the left of 0 and to the right of 0. Okay. These are what we got. We said that x equal to 2 and x equal to negative 2 are critical values. Please make sure you know how to work that out. We set that equal to 0 and just solve for the x. Now you substitute the critical values into the second derivative to using the second derivative test. Okay, y double prime at negative 2 is, of course, that will be negative. y double prime at 2 would be positive. So at x equal to negative 2, it's concave down. At x equal to 2, it's concave up, which means that a local maximum occurs at x equal to negative 2, and a local min occurs at x equal to 2. Okay. Now the critical points would be plugging um, x equal to negative 2 here and x equal to 2 here. And if you solve for y, that's what you get. Okay. So what about points of inflection? Again, we set the we already got the the second derivative set it equal to zero. Okay, which means it's undefined at x equal to 0, right? But let's see if why the concavity still occurs on the left of 0 and right of 0. Well, we've already used these two values. This can, be, this can also be our test uh, points for concavity. Since there is a local max occurring at x equal to negative 2, that means it's concave down. 
to the left of 0 and when we tested using 2 for our x that's to the right of 0 it's concave up so that means concave up and concave down means there is a would there be a point of inflection occurring at x equal to 0? Well, what is the domain of this function? Remember, x cannot be equal to 0, so in fact, it is an asym uh, it's a vertical asymptote. And so this is how the graph is going to look like if we combine everything. It has a vertical asymptote at x equal to 0. It's concave up to the right of 0, and there is that local um, minimum occurring at 2, 2. And then x equal to negative 2, you have a local max occurring there. And it's also concave down to the right of 0. Now where did this come from? Okay. Well, if you look at the graph, if we re when we did the division here, another way of writing this is when y is equal to x over 2, it's another way of writing that, plus 2 over x. This x over 2 is the slant asymptote, so that's that line y is equal to x over 2. And so as x approaches positive infinity, the function approaches the line, that's why it looks like that. And then as x approaches negative infinity, the, the graph will still approach this uh, slant, slanted asymptote. So as x approaches infinity, the y values would approach this diagonal line. So we combined asymptotes and local max and local mins and then concavity to graph this rational function. The following summarizes how the first and second derivative affect the shape of a graph. If you have a function that's differentiable, all to, uh, twice differentiable, then you will have a smooth connected graph that may increase, decrease, and so on and so forth. It will be wavy. Now suppose we have a function that is First, that the first derivative is always positive all throughout, then it may occur, so it may have some points of inflection somewhere, but it will always be increasing. So that's why from left to right it could be wavy. And if it's negative, then it, it will be decreasing and wavy, which means there would be possible points of inflection occurring. Now here, if the second derivative is positive all throughout, that means the graph is concave up all throughout. There's no, uh, there is no point of inflection here. Okay. At the same time, if it's negative all throughout, then there's no point of inflection again. Now, if it's uh, the second derivative changes sign, then that means a point of inflection occurs there. Of course, another way of uh, looking at finding local min and max is the change of sign of the second derivative, I mean of the first derivative, where it's positive and negative, you have a local maximum. From negative to positive of the first derivative, you have a local min. And another way of testing it is, you, is using the second derivative test when y prime is zero, that means you have a line tangent to the curve and it's horizontal and it's negative, it's concave down it makes it a local maximum and a horizontal tangent when y prime is 0 and then a positive second derivative at that critical point or critical value means it's, it's concave up so you have a local minimum occurring at that point Here are just a few functions that you can try out and see how these functions behave. <clears throat> um, you can try number 3, number 21, 
we have done uh, 29 and I think uh, 30 we can you can also work on number thirds very similar to y is equal to x to the two thirds and then number 41 is very similar to our um, previous function that I where we have a vertical asymptote and a slant asymptote here number 43 is very similar to the previous slides that's very similar to that so you can try to graph all these functions <laughs>